Let's talk for a moment about cliches. Ideas, expressions or situations that get repeated and overused to the point where they become tiresome, predictable and boring. Like the movie villain who pauses at the moment of victory to explain his diabolical plan. The awkward, unattractive, socially inept guy who somehow ends up with a smoking hot girlfriend. Or the ageing, cynical cop taking on one last case before he retires. Or the modern remake of an old IP that race and or gender swaps the majority of its characters, makes women the driving force behind every narrative event, introduces gay romance where none existed before, and makes straight white men the target of every single piece of mean-spirited humour from start to finish. Which brings me neatly along to Velma, an HBO remake of the classic Scooby-Doo TV show from the 1970s about a team of mismatched teenagers who travel around the country in a van solving local mysteries. There was Fred, the suspiciously fashion-conscious leader of the team who was always on the lookout for another case to solve. Daphne, his beautiful and accident-prone girlfriend. Velma, their geeky and awkward but highly intelligent friend from high school. Shaggy, a cowardly stoner who often ended up being chased by whatever ghost or monster was on the prowl that week. And of course, his talking doggo Scooby, who was always on the lookout for another snack. Yeah, don't think too much about it, just go along with it. It was a show that I could best describe as light-hearted, campy and well-meaning fun, with a neat and surprisingly wholesome message about the value of friendship people from different backgrounds working together, and the importance of logical thinking and looking beyond the obvious to see the truth of a situation. Now, allow me to transport you into the horrifying nightmare that is modern entertainment, with the release of Velma, a kind of high school drama and theoretical comedy about the origins of the mystery team, and if you look closely, you may notice a few subtle differences from the original show. Like the fact that Velma is now an acid-tongued, race-swapped lesbian, Daphne is now a bitch mean girl and half Asian drug dealer living with her two mums. <laughs> I, I can't do this, man. <laughs> Shaggy is now a black high school news reporter for some reason, with an unrequited crush on Velma, and because the show needs an object of mockery, Fred is now a mentally challenged, hormone deficient rich kid who's so spoiled that he literally doesn't know how to cut up the food on his own plates. <laughs> Oh my god, I feel like I'm having some kind of existential crisis here. I mean, this... this is real. This is a thing which actually got made. Someone wrote all of this stuff down, people edited and refined it, a big room full of experienced executives greenlit it, and whole teams of voice actors and animators and video editors helped to turn it into reality. Millions of dollars were spent on this professional production that people genuinely believed was going to be a worthwhile artistic endeavour. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I thought She-Hulk represented the creative nadir of modern entertainment, but if Velma's taught me anything at all, it's that no matter how far we may sink as a culture, there's always some horrifying new low that we can descend into. I think Velma may actually be one of the most repulsive, creatively bankrupt, nasty, mean-spirited and reprehensibly terrible things I've ever watched in my entire life. The basic narrative, and I stress the word basic here, is that a string of gruesome murders in the local high school draws the attention of Velma Dinkley, a geeky and unpopular teenager who finds herself as the prime suspect. Velma's still haunted by the disappearance of her mum years earlier, but eventually resolves to start investigating, with occasional help from her former friend Daphne and local soy boy Shaggy. Uh, sorry, I mean Norville. The trail seems to lead to Fred Jones, the local rich kid who has both a motive and an unpredictable personality to back it up. But was he really responsible for the murders, or is there something else at work here? Clearly the intention with Velma was to delve more deeply into the relationships and personalities of these characters, giving us more of an insight into who they are when they're not driving around solving mysteries and what actually brought them together in the first place. I mean, I can't say I ever really cared to delve deeper into the personal lives of people like Fred and Daphne, but here we are. And of course, all the usual tropes of the teen drama are present and correct. The high school cliques, the tension between girls of different social standing, the relationship woes and the unrequited crushes, the troubled home life lives, the divorces and the abusive parents and the unconventional family units. It's all populated by a cast of charmless, self-absorbed, neurotic, trite, unlikable morons who all talk and act like they just walked off the set of a Marvel movie, and compounded by dated references and lame attempts at observational humour of the horror genre that movies like Scream did far better 25 years ago. And of course, it's a modern animated show so naturally it has to be hammered home by the same soulless, generic, cal 
martial arts animation style that pretty much everything relies on these days. Honestly, if you told me that most of these shows were simply produced by an AI, then I would absolutely believe you. Like I say, it's a show which pretty much embodies every negative stereotype and cliché of the modern remake, like the pointless race swapping. Man, it's a total mystery why lead writer Mindy Kaling chose to make Velma Indian. The lame attempts at snarky observational MCU-style humour, the overuse of gay romance, and the constant attempts to work in cultural references that became dated about five minutes after they happened. And what's truly baffling about this show is that it tries to wrap all this stuff up in what it believes is a package of ironic, self-aware, postmodern humour. You can't spend half your time criticising the tropes of storytelling while embodying the very cliches of modern remakes that people are so sick and tired of. Now, all of this would be bad enough, resulting in simply another forgettable remake of something far more popular, but the thing that really struck me about Velma is the sheer bitterness and hatred that seems to radiate from it. You really get the sense that this is some kind of emotional colonic irrigation for the writers, like you're witnessing a whole lifetime's worth of petty resentments, jealousy, personal grudges, and bitter regrets being vomited up onto the screen in front of you. I don't know if they had a really tough time in high school or something, but I can't shake the feeling that the whole thing is some kind of coping session against against anyone who was more rich, more successful, more popular, or more attractive than them. Either way, the attempted humour in Velma just comes across as hateful and nasty instead of funny and insightful. And man, what a weird target for something like this. Like I say, the original Scooby-Doo had a pretty wholesome message about a group of friends from different backgrounds learning to work together to overcome challenges. They each had their own strengths and weaknesses, and no one member of the group could solve the mystery by themselves. It taught kids that every individual has value value that you shouldn't judge a person's worth based on superficial characteristics. But of course, this being a modern remake produced by professional victims with ingrained grievances, the diverse female main character has to be the singular genius who triumphs against the odds, and everyone else just kind of orbits around her, entranced by her all-conquering awesomeness. And of course, the rich white guy is always on hand to be the butt of every single joke. Now, you might be wondering if I'm going to watch the rest of this season so I can give it a fuller review by the end, and the answer to that that is, fuck off! Velma isn't worth even a moment more of my time, or anyone else's for that matter. It's a pointless dumpster fire of a show that deserves to be consigned to the ash heap of history as quickly as possible. So do yourself a favour and watch something far more rewarding, like paint drying. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!